When we released our first 10 Best Asian Movies of 2019 video back in December 2019, we knew that there were films that we missed. Now that we've had a chance to watch more films from 2019, we aren't going to revise our original video, but rather we're going to present 10 more titles that we think were awesome enough to deserve their own video. Hi, I'm the Artie Dance from Asian Film Fans and welcome to 10 More, the Best Asian Films of 2019 Part 2. And we're going to do this in alphabetical order. And please, if you like what we do, consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. First up, and in a strange quirk of alphabetical orderness, is the Hong Kong thriller A Witness Out of the Blue, directed by Chi Kyung Fung and starring a huge list of Hong Kong A-graders including Mr. Cool Louis Ku and his usual friends Louis Chong, Patrick Tam, Philip Kyung and Sam Lee, with special performances from Cherry Na, Annie Liu and the brilliant Jessica Swan. But the real star of this stylish and exciting thriller is a parrot who holds the key to unraveling the mystery of who is killing a wanted group of gangsters. Louis Ku plays Sean Wong, the ringleader of the gangsters who pulled off a successful yet violent jewellery store heist where an undercover police officer was shot dead in the crossfire. Three months later, as he attempts to recover the loot from the heist, his fellow gang members are, one by one, turning up dead. All evidence points to Wong as the culprit, but Detective Lam, played by Louis Chung, starts to suspect there is a third party involved and begins to investigate. This is an overlooked hidden gem from Hong Kong in 2019, in a year where Hong Kong cinema struggled to find a hit movie. Strong performances by all the cast, especially the two Lewises, are the standout as they come face to face a few times in this film, but it's when we explore the lives of both characters outside of these interactions, we get to know more about them. Police Officer Lewis, or Detective Lam, is a down on his luck officer, living with a clouder of rescue cats, clouder being the collective adjective for a group of cats. He is a simple man who seems to be unaware of the advances of his colleague Charmaine and is the only person who believes the parrot is the key to solving the mystery. Bad Guy Lewis, or Sean Wong, has a soft side to his hardened criminal persona. He has taken refuge in the spare room of an apartment owned by a blind landlord, played by Jessica Swan, where the audience is witness to his kind and remorseful side. This movie has a great twist at the end that's not too confusing and may even be a little bit obvious if you pay attention to all the subtle clues littered throughout the film. But that doesn't make it any less enjoyable of a thriller to watch and the type of film that's becoming a rare occurrence in Hong Kong cinema lately. I'll admit, it was a crime that we overlooked this film in the original Top 10 Best video, but that's why it's here in this list. Better Days was the 10th highest grossing movie in China in 2019, directed by Hong Kong's Derek Tsang and starring multiple award-winning actress Dong Yu Zhou as Chen Yen, the quiet schoolgirl who was relentlessly bullied at her high school by a trio of rich students. After the death of her classmate is ruled as a suicide by the police, Chen Yen attempts to break the student code of silence by providing information to Detective Zheng regarding bullying at the school, except the police never act on that information due to the influential families of the bullies. While walking home, she stumbles across a young man, Xiao Bei, being assaulted by a group of gangsters. When she tries to intervene, she gets caught up in the assault as well, and this forms the friendship and eventual romance of our two main characters. Feeling alone and ostracized from the world around them, Xiao Bei makes a promise to Chen Yen. He will never leave her and he will never let her get hurt again. A powerful and at times difficult to watch film, director Derek Tsang has crafted a solid story around these two characters to the point where the audience feels all their pain and rides along with all their bumps. However, a thrilling climax is robbed of ultimate satisfaction due to Chinese film censorship. And while it doesn't stop this movie from becoming a must-watch title, it may leave a bittersweet taste in your mouth at the end. You don't often see horror movies in end-of-year top 10 lists, and while it missed out in our first round, this movie is deserving of its place in this list. Detention is a Taiwanese horror thriller based on the hit cult video game of the same name. Directed by first-time director John Su, and starring Gingle Wang as Fei Rei Shin, 
a high school girl exploring her teenage emotions at a time of heightened military security in Taiwan. Set in 1962, in what is known historically as the White Terror Martial Law Period, Feng Rei Xin develops an attraction to her counselor Mr. Chung, who alongside another teacher, Miss Yin, runs a secret book club on school grounds where the members are attempting to preserve banned books based on communism and left-wing politics. But after she's left heartbroken from rejection, she whistleblows on the book club where the army generals slowly torture each member to death. Wrapped with the guilt of what she's done and desperate to save the last surviving member of the club from death, she teams with him as they try to escape the nightmare world around them. Visually, this movie is very unique. The gloomy and dreary sets paint the nightmarish world of their high school, while the use of candlelight pulls your focus on any and everything important. Music is suitably spooky and without the usual horror movie cheap shots, the jump scares. But it's the story and themes that are the real winner. Anti-government and pro-freedom messaging is littered throughout the film, and it's rather obvious who those messages are aimed at. We reviewed this movie previously on this channel, so if you want to check out more about it, click on the link in the description of the video below. This was another movie that was unlucky to miss out on our original top 10 video, the Korean action comedy film Extreme Job, directed by Byung-hyung Lee. What's most interesting about this film is that the story and concept were created during something called the Korea-China Story Joint Development Project, where a studio from each country made a separate movie based on the same basic storyline. The Chinese version, called Lobster Cop, was released in 2018 and is quite an entertaining film, and this Korean version is the same. The basic storyline is this. An undercover group of police officers accidentally buy a restaurant across the road from the gangsters they are staking out, and in order to not get their cover blown, they continue to run the restaurant. Only to their amazement, they end up turning a rundown restaurant to one of the hottest eateries in town, and still find the time to save the day at the end. There are differences between the two versions. In the Chinese version, they end up buying a lobster restaurant, whereas in Extreme Job, they end up running something that I find infinitely more delicious, Korean fried chicken. There is also a slight difference in the group dynamics, with the Chinese version only having a team of four, while Extreme Job adds a fifth member to the team. In typical Korean style, it's laced with the usual visual humor, high octane action, and impressive production values. Unlike most Korean films of 2019, however, it picks one genre and sticks to it throughout the entire film. And in this case, we get an action comedy, and it remains an action comedy right until the end. I would recommend watching both versions of the film just to compare how each country made and developed the same storyline. The Korean version is about 20 minutes longer, and does spend more time establishing the characters and inter-office police rivalry at the beginning. And one might argue the action scenes are more bombastic and impactful, but that will come down to preference. One thing is for sure, you can't go wrong with this film. Another good thing about revisiting the best Asian movies from 2019 is that we've had a chance to add movies from countries that we previously overlooked. And Fury from Vietnam was one such film, directed by Lee Van Kiet and starring popular local actress and model Van Veronica No. This movie showcases the Vietnamese martial art of Vovinan. Commonly compared to the Hollywood film Taken, Van Veronica stars as Hai Phong, an ex-gangster from a martial arts family who lives in a small village with her daughter and works as a debt collector. Fong and her daughter have a tough life in the village. Being a single mother with a violent and mysterious past unsettles the locals. One day, while attempting to pawn a keepsake for money, her daughter is kidnapped. Fong gives chase but loses the kidnappers when they board a bus bound for Saigon. With nothing to lose, she travels back to the city that has abandoned her and attempted to rekindle relationships with old contacts in the mammoth task of trying to rescue her daughter from traffickers before it's too late. While the action can at times feel a little stop-start, as is the nature of most martial arts movies, it's certainly a new technique that most Western audiences would never have seen. Thankfully, the unrealistic wire work and stunts are kept to an absolute minimum. In fact, I don't recall any wire work at all. But there's also a solid thriller storyline behind this movie that is very reminiscent of Taken. 
And as an added bonus is a hard as nails strong female lead who isn't afraid to let her fists and feet do most of her talking. It's not gory like Indonesian productions, but if you're after something from Southeast Asia, then this is an easy recommendation and is available to stream on Netflix. Sometimes Dong Sok Ma can do no wrong. He had a busy 2019 and this is arguably his best movie of the year. The Gangster, The Cop, The Devil is your typical Korean action crime movie, directed by Wong Tae Lee and starring Mi Yul Kim as The Cop, with Dong Sok Ma as The Gangster in a role almost perfectly suited to him. A serial killer, The Devil, is on the loose and makes a grave error when he decides to attack Dong Su, The Gangster, but fails to kill him. The Cop, Tae Suk is desperate to catch the serial killer before the special crimes unit and convinces Dong Su to pull their resources together to lure out the serial killer and catch him. Except it's not really what Dong Su wants. He wants revenge. The enjoyment of watching this movie is in how our two wildly different characters interact and work together. There are massive trust issues between them and also some resistance from Tae Suk's superior who doesn't want to waste too many resources trying to catch the killer. The highlight of the movie is a shootout between a rival gang and our two unlikely partners when they are searching the killer's car. It is here where they learn they must trust each other in order to achieve the outcomes thereafter. The story never gets complex, which makes it easy to follow if you're just here for some action. It doesn't want to frustrate you, it wants to entertain you. Having said that, if you're hoping to know more about the killer's motivations, you may be left a little frustrated as the movie focuses more on the cop and the gangster and less on the devil. And if you need any more reasons to watch this film, then how's this? It's based on a true story of a famous serial killer from 2005. Watch it before the Sylvester Stallone announced remake comes out. The second Hong Kong movie on this list strangely doesn't star Louis Koo, but features two of his frequent co-collaborators in Sean Lau and Nick Chung. Integrity is a traditional Hong Kong ICAC anti-corruption thriller from the master of anti-corruption police movies, Alan Muck, one of the men behind the brilliant Infernal Affairs and Overheard trilogies. This movie is an acquired choice and not to everyone's tastes with its somewhat open-ended yet vague ending that leaves the viewers to fill in a few gaps. Integrity weaves a complex tale of espionage regarding a tobacco smuggling ring and unclaimed duty taxes. Sean Lau plays Chief Inspector King of the Hong Kong ICAC, the Independent Commission Against Corruption, who has been investigating the Hong Kong Customs Agency over fears of corruption within the ranks. His crew have in their possession a collection of falsified reports that claim large quantities of tobacco products had been exported when in reality they were resold in Hong Kong on the black market. Nick Chung plays Jack, the tobacco company's accountant, he is turned whistleblower on the whole operation and now needs ICAC protection as they uncover the party who has masterminded the whole operation. But when Jack skips his court date where he's due to provide testimony and flees to Australia, King's ex-wife is tasked with the job of following after him to convince him to return home. It's a typical modern day Hong Kong thriller demanding of your full attention for the whole two hour runtime. One slight concentration slip and the story becomes quite complex to follow. There is a large cast of characters in this movie who all have their place at the end of the film, with complex relationship systems set up that will provide plenty of aha moments for the attentive and engaged viewer. A few unrealistic scenes in the film, such as a fatal car accident in a crowded car park and the explosion in an apartment complex, don't detract too much from the overall quality of the film. This movie is what some people thought would be impossible. A computer animated movie to rival the big Hollywood studios, but Chinese animation house Cold Room did it. And the result is the animation masterpiece in the jar, Birth of the Demon Child, 2019's highest grossing and highest user rated movie in China, directed by the humorously named Zhao Zi, which translates to dumplings in his first major movie production. Nezha is a retelling of the classic Chinese folktale set in the Fenshen story realm. The demon spirit Pearl is accidentally reincarnated in the baby of Lady Yin's third child, 
who turns out to be Najar. This devilish little creature has a penchant for destructive acts, but under the guidance of the immortal soon-to-be 12th god, Taiyi Junrun, Najar's destructive tendencies are suppressed by an enchanted neck brace. However, he's all alone. His parents are busy fighting off demons, and the villagers are fearful of him. So Taiyi locks him up in a place where Najar can develop his spell casting. When Najar decides he wants to test out his new skills on a water demon threatening to eat a villager, the Dragon King's son, Ao Bing, also joins in. It's here where Najar and Ao Bing form a friendship and set up for a spectacular final battle. The animation and visuals in this movie are top notch and can hold their head high amongst some of the best work of Pixar and the like. Bright colours and massive set pieces are only let down by some slightly stiff animation work and a group of dragons that just don't look quite right. You don't need to be familiar with the storyline to enjoy this film and it does a great job of easing in beginners to the tale. It's obvious this movie was also made with an international audience in mind and the filmmakers have injected some light humour and pop culture references into the mix to make it more approachable. Sometimes you just need to watch a pure popcorn film and not have to worry too much about what's going on. And this is the fun of The Odd Family Zombie on Sale. Directed by Lee Min Jae and starring a typically good looking cast from which we've come to expect from Korean cinema. This is an entertaining comedy horror film with such a ridiculous plotline that it's almost impossible not to smile and laugh along with the film. A zombie who has escaped from an illegal experimental facility is on the loose in a small Korean village. A family of scammers who run the local petrol and service station capture the zombie and use him as a source of income. How? Well, it seems the zombie's bite has a positive effect on the victims. It allows them to regain their youth and virility, but unbeknownst to our entrepreneuring family, there is a hidden long-term side effect that eventually turns all bite victims into zombies. Except they don't realize this until almost the whole town has been bitten. The movie lives up to its name. The family is odd. We've got the younger sister who falls in love with the zombie, the brother who's returning to the village after losing his job in the city, and the couple who own the petrol station will do anything they can to earn a quick buck or two. And that's all topped off by the patriarch of the family who lives in a caravan and spends all day scamming the people he plays cards with while dreaming of going to Hawaii. The 110 minute runtime never feels too long with a funny story well told with warm, lovable characters, including our vegetarian zombie with a love of sauce. If you're looking for a comedic Korean take on the zombie film genre, and you're a fan of movies like Warm Bodies, then this one is for you. This interesting Chinese Hong Kong co-production bucks the trend of most Chinese thrillers, and that is a storyline that makes sense. Remain Silent is another Asian cinema hidden gem, directed by Zhao Ke, starring two well-known local actors in China's Zhao Shun, who plays a dual role, and Hong Kong veteran Francis Ng. One of the more curious details about this movie is the fact it's set in Hong Kong, which allows the filmmakers a more broader opportunity to craft a movie using the Hong Kong courts and legal system, and not be bound by any Chinese film regulations. It's the same reason many Chinese movies film overseas, they get more freedom to explore themes. Other examples include Sheep Without a Shepherd being filmed in Thailand due to showing corrupt police forces, and The Whistleblower shot in Australia for showing corruption in a similar light. This movie centers around the murder of a beloved Hong Kong opera singer, which occurs backstage on the night of her performance. The main suspect is a young man seen running from the crime scene who jumps into Victoria Harbour in an attempt to escape. He is eventually detained and requests the services of a well-known and efficient lawyer, played by Job Shun, who is defending him against the public prosecutor, played by Francis Ng, who also happens to be her ex-lover. As the plot slowly unravels, we learn there's much more to the young man than just an opportunistic thief. He is the long-lost son of the opera singer hoping to establish a relationship with his mother. A cast of suspectable characters are introduced that encourages the audience to guess what's going on and who exactly is involved in the death of the singer. So there it is, another 10 2019 Asian movies that should be on your must-watch list. What do you think of the movies that we've selected for this video? 
Was there anything from 2019 we missed? And before anyone says anything, Parasite was in our original video. Thank you for watching this video. Please give it a like and subscribe to support our channel. We'll see you next time.